Salam hari Ahad. Salam hari Ahad. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Saya Derek Fernando sekali lagi bersama anda di sini dan pada kali ini kita akan bersama saudara Fahim Puah. Beliau telah memeluk agama Islam pada tahun 1982. Masya Allah. Beliau merupakan pesara dari bidang kejuruteraan dan beliau juga telah menulis buku yang berjudul Reflections of Life in the Spiritual Journey. Masya Allah. Jadi jangan ke mana-mana, kami akan kembali selepas ini. Insya Allah. Assalamualaikum. Salam Hari Ahad Assalamualaikum Fahim. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Masya Allah brother, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, very well. How about you? Alhamdulillah, very happy to have you here on the show. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we've we've known each other for a few years actually since uh, I was teaching your uh, your daughter Nafisa. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very smart yes. girl. Nice to meet you. So, meet up with you again. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Now here we have you so you can share a bit with us uh, regarding your story. A very interesting story. Inshallah, I'll be glad to share my little experience. Whatever you know, inshallah yeah. ta'ala. So as I understand, brother Fahim, um, you under, you embraced this Islam in the year of 1982, mashallah. That's correct. 1982. That's more than 30 years ago. Yes, long time ago. Alhamdulillah. So something I'd like to ask you, and I'm sure that all of our viewers are wondering as well, what was it like being a non-Muslim and embracing Islam at that point in time in Malaysia? Well. Um, At that time, I believe very few people converted to Islam. Um, situation then was uh, very different from now. At that time, uh, non-Muslims' perception of Islam was very negative. Example, Chinese would think that uh, if you come into Islam, you become a Malay. Mm-hmm. To them, Malay is Islam and Islam is Malay. Subhanallah. So, Parental objection was a major issue uh, for conversion, mm. and added to this problem was a lack of uh, Islamic NGOs that could provide Islamic in- information or knowledge. Uh, so most people would find it difficult to accept Islam, and perhaps those who convert converted at that time were because of uh, inter. Racial marriage. Mm, okay, mashallah. Yeah, so it was quite brother. a challenge. It was. Yes, it was a big challenge uh, to embrace Islam at that time. But alhamdulillah, me. you were able to. Alhamdulillah, all by Allah's will. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, brother Fahim, we're looking at your book, uh, Reflections of Life in the Spiritual Journey. Alhamdulillah, very interesting book. A collection of so inspiring short articles written by yourself, and uh, here you t- you're telling us about your journey to Islam. And how it's it's impacted your life, basically, right? Yes, that is uh, just sharing a bit of my experience, my feelings and opinions. It's nothing great about this book. Alhamdulillah, brother. So tell us if, from your book, according to you, what is it that you consider to be the truth, the essential truth of what Islam represents? Uh, I think um, the basic truth about Islam. Uh, is uh, related to the purpose of Allah's creation of human beings. Uh, human beings must worship Allah alone as the one and only God. Uh, because He is the Creator, He is also the Master. Uh, we all become servants, His servants. Uh, Then there's a, another point, another purpose of his creation, that is uh, human beings must do good or righteous deeds. So if we link these two together, it becomes uh, the essence of uh, Islamic life. Mashallah. Um, one without the other doesn't qualify you to be a servant of Allah. Mashallah. Unfortunately. Mashallah. Because we know many non-Muslims. They practice good, they do righteous deeds, but they do not worship Allah. So, the converse is also true. If you only worship Allah and do not do good deeds, then you are also 
uh, not consider There's something lacking a good Muslim yeah like it's not complete not complete at all. and this yeah. is linked to something which you mentioned in the first chapter of your book you talk about happiness and something very interesting something that uh, a lot of people wonder about it's a big question right regarding life so could you tell us what is according to you your your understanding of the Islamic perspective of happiness and how practicing Islam can actually help us achieve happiness? Hey, yeah, okay, this is a good question. Um, happiness in the Islamic perspective is related to two dimensions of existence. One in this dunya life and the other in the hereafter. Um, but this dunya life is also very important. It serves as a transit station for Muslims actually to uh, worship Allah alone and uh, do good deeds. So with the hope or with the intention that uh, they will become people of the paradise. And that is where uh, Muslims uh, attain eternal peace Mashallah. and happiness. Mashallah. Yeah. Inshallah. But um, if in this life, Muslims do not strive to practice uh, the teachings of Islam, then uh, the hope of uh, attaining eternal peace or joy in the hereafter becomes very slim. Right. Right. So something for us to ponder. About. Yes. Something you must practice in this life in order to reach the next life of eternal peace. Right. Uh, once you submit yourself totally to Allah, the Creator, uh, it becomes a source of happiness for you, even in this life itself. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So may Allah accept it from us. Ah, inshallah. Ameen. Yeah, ameen. Jazakallah khairah, brother. So now we're going for a short break. Uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The modern world. The hustle and bustle. A city like KL, where food is life. How is it that 930 tons of food is wasted in this city every single day? The same city with 300,000 households living below the poverty line. And for them, every day is a struggle against one common enemy. An enemy that most of us will never have to confront. Hunger. But it doesn't have to be this way. Our mission is simple. We believe that no one should have to go hungry. Overcoming hunger is the first step towards better standards of health, education, and employment. Help Charity Right to help those who need it the most. Help Charity Right to fight hunger, one meal at a time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, dear viewers. Here we are back with our brother Fahim Pua, our Malaysian Chinese revert who reverted more than 30 years ago. Alhamdulillah. So, brother Fahim, uh, something I wanted to ask you in your book, you uh, talked a lot about Hajj, about your experience, but you didn't really mention a lot about Ramadan. So, we know Ramadan is coming soon. So, can you tell us what was it like going through your first Ramadan back in the 80s, fasting for the first time? What was it all like? Well, to tell you the truth, the first Ramadan fasting was not easy for me. Mm -hmm. I think mainly because uh, I, I actually had a medical condition at that time. Allah. It's kind of gastric trouble known as dyspepsia. Mm. So I was on uh, medication on and off. I had to struggle with the fasting. Allah. Alhamdulillah, strange thing happened. Several months after my first uh, Ramadan fasting, this dyspepsia disappeared by itself. It's a kind of miracle. Allah knows best. Mashallah, that's a great story. <laughs> yeah. That's a great Alhamdulillah. story. Alhamdulillah, yeah. one of many. Yeah. 
one of many that I've heard, alhamdulillah. Now, apart from that, you also shared a, a beautiful poem. I liked it very much in your book. It says, I shall pass through this world once. Any good, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any other human being, let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. So why, why did you want to share this uh, poem with your readers and how do you want to link this poem to the teachings of Islam? Well, uh, alhamdulillah, this poem really touched my heart when I first read it. Mashallah. It shows Allah's great love for mankind. He created humans uh, to for them to live in peace and harmony in this world. Correct. And we are supposed to help each other, uh, especially uh, our help must be extended to those who are poor and needy, who are less fortunate than us. Allah created different categories of people, poor and rich, as a test to all of us. The poor are tested in the sense that uh, they should exercise patience and try to find, uh, work hard to find a better living for themselves. The rich are tested uh, whether they are willing to help the poor. So it's a balance, mashallah, you know, granted by Allah. We know in Islam, we have uh, to practice fardu ayn. That is a relation with uh, obligations towards Allah. And at the same time, we have to practice fardu ifaya, right. which, which is actually uh, love, help extended to other fellow human beings. Uh, in fact, beyond that, our love must be extended to animals and even the environment. Mashallah. You see the beauty of Islam? Mashallah. So this poem reflects uh, the essence of uh, Fadu Kifaya, which many of us have actually neglected. And uh, I believe from uh, my little knowledge that Allah would not have mercy on others who uh, have no, Allah will not have mercy on people who have no mercy uh, on others. So, uh, in, in this sense, unless we practice the acts of charity to fellow beings, I think the chances of us gaining a place in the paradise would be very slim. Right. right, yeah. right. And do you agree with me? Exactly. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, brother. Alhamdulillah. Amazing yeah. insights. Really appreciate it. I can feel your words. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Now, considering, considering the fact that you've been a revert for more than 30 years now, you embraced Islam more than 30 years ago. Wow. Alhamdulillah. Tell me, what would you like to share with those brothers and sisters out there who have recently embraced Islam? What sort of advice could you give them now that maybe they're struggling with different things, they have decided to embrace this lifestyle? What would you like to tell them? I would congratulate all the newcomers to Islam, the Mu'allah so-called. Alhamdulillah, that is the greatest gift from Allah. You are blessed. You are really blessed, uh, those uh, Mu'allahs. Please make use of the opportunity to learn more Islam and practice Islam as it should be practiced. Devote your life, submit totally to the will of, will of Allah in order, in order to gain felicity in this life and in the hereafter. That is the basic no, uh, advice I would give to Mu'alafs. If you do not seek uh, knowledge, your Iman will remain weak and you will fall prey to Satan easily. You will commit uh, sins and even, even, you will even lose your way in this uh, world that is a cheating, deceiving world. So again, uh, advice is come into Islam wholeheartedly, learn all about Islam, uh, 
practice what you learn the whole life. And learning is a lifelong process. As you might have heard, uh, Confucius used to tell us, learn until the day you die. Inshallah, as Muslims, you must perform better than that. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for your words, brother. Really appreciate it. And now before we finish off, would you like to share something with our audience in uh, your native tongue? I believe it's Mandarin. Yes, uh, Alhamdulillah. I was educated in Chinese school for 10 years, my ba basic education. I, but I have not spoken Mandarin for a long time. I <laughs> hope I still remember. <laughs> Inshallah ta'ala. Well, maybe something from your book. I don't know, is there a Chinese version of the book yet? Uh, no, it's not translated. Okay, I so Inshallah ta'ala, we'll that. work on that uh, inshallah. together. Inshallah ta'ala. So please go ahead, anything uh, that you would like to tell them. Yeah. 亲爱的观众们 那就是我们死的日子。各位观众可以想一想，啊，我们死以后到底去哪里了？啊，有两个啊问题，尤其是啊最重要的，给你们啊一点劝告。第一个问题就是，人从哪里来？第二个问题就是，人又往哪儿去